Hey everyone, in today's DMZ guide, I'll solo every boss on every single map. So I'll walk you through how I like to kill all the bosses solo and give some tips and tricks along the way. In a recent live stream, I decided to try and solo all the bosses in a single sitting, which was a fun little challenge. I enjoyed it. And I think every player should be comfortable soloing all of the bosses in DMZ. And hopefully this video will help you get to that place if you're not there already. I'll have links in the description below if you want to jump around to specific boss fights. But before we dive into all the boss kills, today's video is sponsored by Arena Breakout, a brand new extraction shooter specifically designed for mobile. For those of you that are familiar with my channel, then you know how passionate I am about extraction shooters. There's nothing quite like the intensity you feel when you make your way through a war-torn area, scavenging for supplies and valuable loot, not knowing if the next step that you take is going to be your last. Well, Arena Breakout is a classic high risk and reward game because when you die, you lose everything perfectly in alignment with the extraction shooter genre. I was able to get my hands on this game early and it's so cool to be able to play a high quality extraction shooter on mobile. It really is amazing how much they were able to pack into this game and there's nothing quite like this looter shooter in the mobile market right now. Players build their loadout with valuable gear that they've acquired through playing the game like guns, armor, medical supplies and stuff. There's over 700 gun modifications, so you really have the liberty to build your weapons and match your playstyle. Whether you want to build for speed and close range fights or keep a distance and use longer range tactics, the choice is yours. Once you decide how much of your gear that you want to risk, grab a mission and load in. Work your way towards completing your missions, all while trying to stay alive against NPCs and other real players. This game has an amazingly robust loot table and advanced systems that you would not expect in a mobile game, but they really did pull it off nicely. The gunplay and the weapon animations are absolutely excellent and really help fuel the immersion and intensity. They even have a player-to-player -player trading market system similar to Escape from Tarkov, giving you that opportunity to sell your valuable items. In fact, you can tell that there's just been a lot of inspiration from Escape from Tarkov, and you can basically look at it as Tarkov Mobile. Welcome to the gold standard of extraction shooters on mobile, Arena Arena Breakout is now available on July 14th on iOS and Android, so make sure you go and check it out. Now let's dive into some boss kills. We're going to walk you through everything here. So the first map we're going to look at is Building 21 and the Wheelson. And the Wheelson roams the top floor of the Building 21 area, and it goes around in a counterclockwise circle and so when we get up there we're going to go in through any of the doors other than a3 because a3 is locked and also do keep in mind that the doors do not open until there is 11 minutes left on the clock once we get in there we're going to run clockwise so that we run into him instead of trying to chase him from behind we can use things like thermite semtex to easily take him down the kv broadside with dragon's breath is incredible against him but more importantly than anything, he will beam you down quite quickly. So getting an angle where you're kind of just hitting the edge of him while you're being completely covered by a corner or a box like that is the best strategy to go with. Next up and last boss in building 21 is the Velikin. He has a grenade launcher. He is kind of spicy. He does spawn at four minutes and 40 seconds. And he likes to spawn in a couple different places. He can spawn here in the medical area, right in kind of the middle where that elevator is. He can also spawn on the third floor where one of the evacs is all the way kind of exposed on the side. And I'll show that in a second. But the, the trick to killing the Velikin is obviously having a KV broadside once again is extremely valuable. You can just roll right up to his face and blast him. The closer you get, the less lethal he does become because he starts missing with the grenade launcher. So you don't want to necessarily get into melee range, but getting to a point where you can just blast him without melee range is going to be your best bet for killing him. And sometimes he does like to spawn down in the basement now in the garage area. Um, back by the server rooms i've been told so he has a couple different spawns now it's not quite as cut and dry as it was in season two but i like to wait on the third floor and check medical and check the uh, third floor elevator as well just to see if i can catch him coming out right away it makes it a lot easier if you can get him right when he spawns versus having to deal with him with a bunch of other tier 3 ai around all right next up we've got ashika island and ashika island has the bomb maker and another wally or wilson there are also two juggernauts down in the waterways they do not count towards the forward operating base challenges as bosses so just keep that in mind the only juggernaut that counts is the one on Almazra, and we'll go over him in a second but right here we are in the main castle area and we're just going to kill the wheelson with grenades or thermites same thing keep an angle where he can barely hit you the last thing you want is to have him create long angles on you and then just beam you down. He does hit pretty hard. You can also DDoS him 
and run up and hack him or killing him is really not too bad and then hacking him and going right through the front door if you like i personally if i'm going to go through the front door i will take the doors on the right preferably you would like to come in from below which is underneath in the waterways you take this zip line from underneath the castle and this door here requires the castle key but it is significantly less effort less aggro from ai on the outside and easier to get in and out um, and avoid enemy player confrontation although when you do have the physical case if that's what you're going for obviously it'll be marked on the map but if you're just going for bomb maker kills coming in through the bottom is going to be um, a very solid way of doing it it's just going to create a much safer route now when you get to this stairwell here there is a diffuse grenade that you have to do right at the bottom of the stairwell and you're just going to these guys are just going to funnel to you almost half the the ai inside of the castle is going to funnel to you and you can just kill a bunch of them in the stairwell watch out for this grenade diffuse that's right there on the stairwell and we're going to diffuse that and then we're going to go ahead and just take the stairwell all the way up to the top floor and we're going to work our way towards the boss area there's a couple proxy mines and claymores that we're going to kill on the way we also want to take out one of the sentry guns and uh, we can do that without it ever seeing us at all just kind of same thing we do with the wally just keep it right on the edge fire your shots it'll never aggro scrapped no problem there is a claymore on the right here that you want to blow up before you go in you can just wall bang this sucker through the wood and then we're going to go in and take a left and head up that first stairwell and as we get up here there is another grenade that we're going to want to defuse right at the base but before i do that the two riot shield guys are going to come down the stairs and i do like to take them out first because they're shielded and they can be a pain also keep in mind we didn't see it on this run but there are sometimes three standard one plate riot shielders that can spawn inside the castle as well so make sure all of the riot shielders are dead before you're doing any dramatic maneuvering but we're just going to head upstairs and we're going to easily shoot down the bomb maker no problem at all now if you did come in from the main entrance and you killed wally and you came in through the front door the alarm will be going off if you go to the computer you can disarm the alarm and turn that annoying sound off and i think it also reduces uh, ai reinforcement as well there also is the cheese method for killing the bomb maker through the window it still exists um, it seems to be slightly more difficult than I remember. I was trying to kill him uh, in this particular run. I couldn't do it, but I was killing other AI around, but you can always take a swing at him there. You'll see his green laser sometimes light up the wood on the window. That's when you know he's right in front of you and you can beam him down through the window as well. Or at the very least, attempt it before going into the castle. All right, next map is Vondel, and we've got the Frogman. The Frogman is the new boss in Vondel, and he's kind of an easy guy to kill. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. Um, the easiest way is with a precision airstrike. If you have one, you can just get ahead of him, lead your shot on him. And just the one thing to keep in mind if you're precision airstriking him and you're trying to lead your shot on him, you know, he has two different speeds. He has the aggro speed, which is a lot faster, and he has kind of like the casual speed, which is a little bit slower. So just keep in mind which speed he's going at before you lead your shot with the precision airstrike. You can also airstrike him right as he's spawning in. He likes to spawn in on any of the three corners, the northeast, the northwest, or the southwest corner. So you can just precision airstrike him right as he's coming in if you have position. Or you can do the mantle method, which is literally as he's coming by, just run and sprint right at the side of him, mantle up, and just start beaming him. The KV broadside is going to be the best weapon of choice for this, but you can use anything you want um and just shoot the old front engine and he'll be down in no time now be careful when you're mantling the side of him if you get a little bit too close he can run you over and insta kill you so be careful with that if you're trying to really avoid that you can bring in a ddos and ddos it'll slow him down a little bit and give you more of an opportunity to jump on the side a little bit more safely all right next up we've got al mazra and we'll start with the pyro the pyro has three spawn locations the post office the control tower and embassy and you can actually kill him without a key in all three, but this is by far the easiest in the post office. The other two are a little bit more difficult to do and quite frankly don't work all the time. So I don't even mess with it unless I'm just going to bring in a key. Um, you can obviously use a skeleton key to get into any of the locked areas to kill him. But this one is by far the easiest. And as of season four reloaded, he will start firing back through these windows. I think the best method is to literally just destroy his trophy system that you can see blinking right at the base of the window there if you destroy the trophy system just one semtex through the window to stick him and he will be dead this is a great way to work on your forward of operating base 
pyro kills if needed and you don't have a key you can always fly by and check and see if he's here and if you're gonna do it legit and you have a key or you find a key just semtex him it literally is a one stick semtex to kill him no matter where he is now sometimes the trophy system can get in the way so make sure you destroy it but a lot of times he does like to push away from the trophy system as he does here and you can just one semtex him hit him with a stick and it's all over super easy next up we've got the chemist and as always he's in the center of the radiation zone and he's wearing yellow and as always he only takes two headshots with a sniper rifle to kill him so what i like to do is isolate him before i aggro anything else around and i will figure out where he is and i will take him out first and if i'm going for the case or if i'm going for the vest or anything or the skull because he does have a guaranteed golden skull i like to one tap all of the tier 2 ai so any sniper's uh, headshot will one tap so if you're planning on going in there, I highly recommend clearing them out from a distance and then going in and taking down the stragglers. Now, if you don't have a sniper, you can always grab that free SPX that's literally sitting on high rise still. It's part of a mission from season three, not season four, but it's still there. So you can grab it and use that as your sniper. Next up, we've got the Juggernaut or Mr. Jugs. Mr. Jugs likes to be at channel seven, right at the base of the building, just outside Police Academy to the west or in Rohan on this western edge as well. And just like he always is, he is quite dangerous if you are taking him on head on. And similar to a lot of the close range boss fights that we do, we're just basically trying to get him a little bit of a head glitch or an angle to hold some cover on the left or right hand side and just as he's walking up just beam him straight in the head with every single bullet you've got he will go down very very quickly and lastly on almazra we've got good old commander hilo obviously he's on vondal and ashika island as well you can kill him anywhere you want on any of the maps it's the same method every single time it's capture a sam site wait for the capture and then aggro the helicopter and wait for the sam site to shoot down the commander helo not super difficult better to do if you have a little building to hang out in because the sam site isn't exactly uh the best shot but it will take it down relatively quickly it only takes two hits from the sam site and once that's done boom you can go loot the crate and you've got your commander helo killed easily all right, next up, we've got Kosha Complex and the Rhino and the Sniper. And I'd say the Rhino is probably the hardest boss in the game, even though there is a very, very simple and easy way to kill him. Just overall, if you do him straight up, he probably is the most challenging. The simple way to kill the Rhino and the Sniper is to use bomb drones. So you can use a bomb drone from outside the area and just fly it in and put it right in front of his head and pull the trigger and he will die. And same with the Sniper. I actually have a video on how to kill them both within 60 seconds, which is a mission that you have uh, later on in the game if you haven't seen it. Um, so you are gonna be tasked with killing them both within a minute. And the easiest way is without question to use two bomb drones. Bring them in with you before you come in and it's super easy i'll have a link in the description below if you want to check that video out it's going to walk you through from the very beginning the entrance i like to take how to get to the middle how to get to the side entrance so definitely take a look at that if you're looking for a little bit more in depth but for this video the simple answer is bomb drone them to get the quickest possible kills or if you take them straight up the kv broadside is very nice or the default shotguns that drop off of all the tier three AI inside the kosher complex are very, very strong. So you can use that. A couple of things to keep in mind when you're fighting him legit. Number one, if you evade back to your area where you came in, he will go back to his spawn and re-armor up. And a lot of times you're gonna get that alert that the Rhino is armoring back up. It means he's gonna be full health when you re-engage him. Sometimes it just is what it is and you have to evade. The tier three AI reinforcements can be a real handful here. So the number one issue when killing the Rhino is the ads, the tier three AI, not the Rhino himself. Cause once you have all the ads pretty much under control, you can just kite the Rhino around a box over and over again until he's dead. It really is not too much trouble killing him straight up. It's just the additional AI that's the problem. So if you have to back off and kill a bunch of AI from your starting area, wherever entrance you go in, uh, so be it. But once you have it all cleared out, then take him out using the KV broadside and just kite him around a box like you're seeing me do here. Next up is the sniper, and you can do this the conventional way and work your way through damaging him from each section that he's in, waiting for him to smoke grenade and rotate out. You can also DDoS these wires and just fly right in and blast them in the face with a KV broadside, which is definitely an option because the DDoS will break the green lasers and you can fly right in and blast them in the face very quickly, or you can do them straight up and range them down the number one trick here is take your time. Don't get hit by any of the trip wires. You can 
on two of these occasions you can actually shoot him from the previous spot so right here we are beaming him from the original spawn we're not getting into an area where he can really hit us and we can take him down from here and he's going to kind of move into his third spot the third spot will be a little bit easier and we can do the same with the fourth spot as well but take your time going through here watch for enemies coming in from behind you don't hit any trip mines and you're not going to have any real trouble with this at all don't let him snipe you more more than once before you're fully healed and you shouldn't have any trouble killing the sniper all right, next up is the Scavenger, and the Scavenger can spawn on any of the maps, Vondal, Ashika Island, or Almazra. I find that he's kind of tricky. He Obviously, he, if you didn't know, he spawns in places where players have died, and he kind of hoards their backpack and their dog tags, but he won't spawn if players are nearby. So basically, players have to have died, then those players have vacated the area, and then he will spawn in, and then the next time a player gets close, the little red circle will appear and say, hey, the Scavenger is nearby. The trick with the scavenger is finding them and the most consistent place of finding the scavenger is near the farms in Ashika Island because of how many spawns are close to this. There's like four spawns right here. There's always PVP right off the start of the match. So if you're looking for the scavenger, I personally find that farms on Ashika Island is the most consistent way to find him if you're looking to farm kills for him. Obviously he can spawn on every map, um, but if you're just looking for a consistent method, this is the way. And similar to the Chemist, it is a two-tap headshot with any sniper rifle, and all of his guards are also a two-tap with the sniper rifle as well. So keeping your distance from him is the key to getting a quick and easy scavenger kill. So that does it for all the bosses in the game. However, honorable mention, the train on Almazra. Quite frequently, the weapons case is inside the train safe. And as a solo player, the train can be quite difficult, especially since you are massively exposed to other enemy operators if you're doing this. The best thing you could do with the train is probably start it later on in the raid when a lot of players have left. That might be a good solution. However, the number one tip I can give you with this when you're doing it solo is only kill three of the AI off the helo and do not destroy the helo. The worst thing you can do is have the healer destroy because it'll just respawn with six new tier three AI. So the best thing you can do is shoot off three of the AI to limit the amount of incoming fire and then just sit here in this exact spot and lay behind this stone block and just dodge them the entire time. And twice you'll have to go up and restart the drill. So don't forget to do that. So make sure you're within range and letting the drill continue to drill and then go restart the drill when it jams. But without question, leaving three guys up on the helo is clutch and it leaves the helo alive and you get half as much incoming fire and you're going to be in pretty good shape. That's it for this quick solo guide to kill all the DMZ bosses easily. I hope this video helped you get a little bit more comfortable killing these guys. And if you have any questions, don't be shy in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to drop a sub for more DMZ content and I'll catch you in the next one.